Excellent. Um, thank you. Uh, so, yes, so Claire and I are presenting tonight. I'm just starting off um, as a councillor. I think, um, as all the other councillors will know, we're supported by an army of professionals who um, do such amazing work. So Claire knows a lot more about this space than I do. Um, but I just thought I'd um, introduce the Mornington Peninsula to you for those who don't know it. Um, we're, we're quite a large shire. Um, as you can see there, we've got 720 kilometres square of land, 70% of which is green wedge. Um, and we've got 10% of Victoria's coastline. Um, we have over 2,000 kilometres of roads that take us through our 42 townships and villages. Uh, I thought I might go a bit off topic here. Well, not off topic, clearly still on transport. Um, so the some some of the issues that I've found since I've become a councillor and during my campaigning um, period is that um, Mornington Peninsula residents really like footpaths or they don't really like footpaths. There's a big tension in our community. So when a lot of people thought they were leaving Melbourne during COVID, they actually fled to the Mornington Peninsula, which is part of Melbourne, and didn't realise that we didn't have footpaths. So now we're getting a lot of requests from footpaths, which our transport team are working towards. Um, Claire, can you please put on to the next page? Um, and so these are our, our transport facts. Um, we've, yes, as I said, we've got over 2,000 kilometres of road. Um, and our motorised trips are forecast to increase by around 21%. Um, and during holiday seasons, this is a, the big issue for us as a shire, is we see 30% of growth in population. So we, we kind of have sometimes, you know, um, low populations, but then in summer they explode to Melbourne-sized population. So it's a really interesting tension for us. And with those 2,000 kilometres of roads, obviously we've got a lot of infrastructure and um, transport costs as well to keep them up to date. So a lot of money is being spent on renewal, um, yeah, renewal program and stuff like that. So there you go. I'll hand it over to you now, Claire, who will be able to talk much more eloquently and <laughs> impressively on this topic. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Race. So the main um, thing there is the private vehicle use, uh, which for all trips and trips to work is um, the dominant figure. Um, future transport needs uh, for the Mornington Peninsula Shire, we have a population of nearly 170,000 and that's uh, looking to increase to 180 or a bit more thousand in by 2036. So we're expecting to see more tourism um, that's sort of coming out of COVID-19 as people can't travel any further than their own backyard. And that the other main figure for us is that 30% of the Shire population are over 60, which is far higher than 19% in Melbourne. So what's driving our um, some of the key directives for the council is the newly adopted Shire Community Vision, also called Peninsula 2040. And the key themes of this is around transport and climate change. And part of that will be integrating transport and accessibility, uh, like footpaths and bike paths. And that's going to be a key theme. So as part of the climate emergency strategy that's come out of that community vision, we're hoping to go by 2025 those figures to increase active travel, double our public transport usage and get some electric vehicle charging stations out there. And then by 2030, the strategy is to reduce emissions on roads by 50% and uh, the fleet service will be zero emissions. So we've got a bit of work to go, um, realising that nearly between 80 and 90% or close to 90% or more is currently using a private vehicle. The other key directives that help us um, with our transport strategies is our Towards Zero Road Safety Strategy. And Mornington Peninsula Shire has amongst the highest casualty crash rates in Metro Melbourne, uh, 55 deaths uh, in the six years up to 2020. So second worst municipality in Victoria. Not a great um, role to have. Uh, we're also working towards our new integrated transport strategy. So this is where we're connecting our climate emergency with transport and land use planning, and that's being finalised this year. So it's a real part of the community vision that the council has put forward is around about transport initiatives and climate change. Recent highlights for us in the transport area is our safer speed trial that we got up on 33 roads that were reduced 80 kilometres. 
um, an increase and improvement in buses as a result of the Better Bus campaign with over 90,000 engagements with our community. So that's the state funding of just over 13 million to improve our bus services. We're doing smart, smart parking trials in Rye and Mornington areas. We've got parking precinct plans. We're delivering our priority footpaths via our pedestrian access strategy. And as Councillor Race has said, we're getting more demands for those footpaths. All our footpaths are really long, so it's all it all costs a bit of money. Um, we work with our customers, and and that's part of my job. We have over four and a half thousand requests each year to get to get back to customers. Uh, we also have been um, had some significant funding in Black Spot and Roads to Recovery this year. So our council seeks to provide a safe and active space and increase public transport system on the Mornington Peninsula. Thank you. Thanks, Claire.